Today on Mr. Media, I'll be talking to Pete Williams, co-author with Brody Welty of a new book that's an e-book with video called Paddle Fit. Stick around. I won't be getting on one of those crazy things, but if you've got access to Mr. Media via YouTube or Vimeo, you're going to get an up-close and personal demonstration of the newest fitness rage, stand-up paddleboarding, SUP for short. is recorded live before a studio audience of landlubbers who get woozy just watching those crazy kids paddleboarding out in good old coffee pot bayou in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. I live very close to Tampa Bay and every day brings at least two or three opportunities to experience it via coffee pot bayou near downtown St. Petersburg. I can see a lot of wildlife if I periodically glance out to the beautiful blue waters of the bay. Manatees, dolphins, seabirds of every kind, kayakers, canoe enthusiasts, pleasure boaters, and lately, stand-up paddleboarders. The first dozen times I saw them out there, feet planted on what looks like a surfboard as they, gent as they gently paddle along, it looked like one of the nuttiest things I'd ever seen. Although, I have to admit, it's a lot more inviting than parasailing. Now, this is not a sport for me. But when I learned that my friend and frequent Mr. Media guest Pete Williams had helped stand up paddleboard expert Brody Welty write a book, again, that's an ebook with video about the subject, I thought it'd be fun to talk about it here. And stick with us, we're not going to just talk. Pete, the author of The Draft and co author of the Core Performance book series with Mark Verstegen, is going out there in Coffee Pot Bayou in Tampa Bay and give us a demonstration. Pete Williams, welcome back to Mr. Media. Thanks, Bob. Great to be here. Good to have you. So, you know, I don't know what's crazier, paddleboarding or writing a book about it. Um, I suspect you're on a crest of a rising wave, though, huh? Yeah, no pun intended. It's something that really has come about uh, in popularity. About 15 years ago, Laird Hamilton and Dave Kalama, best known as big wave surfers, kind of resurrected it. It's been around for hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years in, in Hawaii and in the Polynesian area, but really something that's uh, become a lot more uh, popular because it's so accessible. It's easier than surfing, and unlike surfing where you're going to be on a wave at most 20 seconds, you can get up on a board and be out there for hours if you like. Now, you and I are completely the antithesis of, of, of each other in terms of physical fitness. You, I mean, people can see you. He is as fit as he looks, folks. Uh, totally fit. I'm totally unfit. Uh, I live vicariously through you. Now, tell me how you got interested in this on top of all the other things that you take an interest in. Yeah, you know, I've, I've become what I, I call a triathlon dropout. I got into that sport big time about four years ago and still do some triathlons. It's still a, a wonderful sport, but I I guess I, I got tired of staring at a black uh, line in a pool. I got tired of risking life and limb uh, here in the Pinellas County on the roads on my bicycle and, and the pounding on my knees. I, I know I'm going to pay the price for that at some point. So I saw the stand-up paddleboarding and I have never been a surfer, a kayaker. I've never owned a boat. always have loved the water and I saw this and I said, you know, this looks like it's the best of all worlds. I don't have to have a lot of maintenance as I would for a boat. I don't have to be sitting down, which I've always kind of found uncomfortable with kayaking and canoeing. I love the idea of being what a lot of people refer to as the closest thing to walking on water. And not only that, it is the best workout ever created, and I've tried them all. Now, you just had a birthday. I won't give the number if you don't want me to, but you just had a birthday. How does this hold up as you age? I mean, can you keep doing this a while, or is it is it the type of thing that balance and, and other issues that maybe you'll do for a while but something else will have to no, I think because it's so low impact, I'm going to probably do this longer than I will, say, running or triathlon, because that's harder on the knees. I mean, I have the scars from bike accidents. Uh, those kind of things still scare me. So I, I think I'm going to do this longer. This, I really think, is the best workout in vetted, because it's a tremendous core workout. It's all about the hips, the midsection, the shoulders. Uh, it's You think about how the fitness industry has evolved in recent years. It's all about working on an unstable surface like a BOSU ball or a stability ball. 
because you're creating stability by working on an unstable surface. But what's a more unstable surface than the water? And so if you think of your, your paddleboard as just a giant stability ball, if you will, working on the water itself, that challenges all these areas that's going to create that stability, which is so important as we age. We think of our, our elderly friends and how locked down they are in the hips, the midsection, the shoulders, not just our elderly friends, some of my fellow middle-aged friends. And so if we can uh, do this preventative maintenance, this prehab, if you will, beforehand, we're going to be able to not only stand up paddleboard, but do many other things well into our uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, and, and beyond. Now let's talk about the stability issue. Now, water, by its nature, is not stable. However, I understand Tampa Bay, where we are, is a more popular place to do this because for water, it's actually fairly stable. Right. The Tampa Bay area is about as flat as it gets when it comes to calm water. We don't have surfing, so uh, you're not going to get out there and, and surf even if you wanted to. And so the flatter the water, absolutely, the easier it's going to be. Which isn't to say some slightly choppy weather means your day of paddle boarding is not going to happen. It can. It, it does make it a little more challenging. But yes, just about any given day here in the Tampa Bay area, it's so flat. Whether you're in the Gulf, whether you're in a place like uh, Coffee Pot Bayou, any of our lakes, uh, and anywhere. You have so many opportunities, I dare say, per capita per mile, however we're measuring it, Tampa Bay probably is the, the best place in the country for stand-up paddleboarding. And where else in the country, now that you've said that, I have to ask them, where else uh, are we likely to see people doing it? Where else is it catching on? Well, not surprisingly, wherever there's a surf culture, San Diego, Southern California, Hawaii, but we're seeing it really in areas like Virginia and North Carolina, which you don't normally associate with uh, with surfing, although it has some underrated surfing there, but that has uh, a lot of intercoastal waterways, that sort of areas, lakes as well, and, and people want to get out in the ocean as well. Now, what is it that makes it such a good workout in terms of, uh, that to me, if I was out on, on a board trying to go from the kneeling to the standing up, um, the, the, the greatest amount of tension in my body would be fear of falling over. and or In my case, it wouldn't just be landing in the water, which wouldn't be so bad. It would be hitting my head on the board because that's what I would do. So what, what makes it such a good workout? It's the... It's, it's a combination of things as to why it's such a good workout. I mean, first, because you're challenging your body from a core standpoint. I mean, the core whole training has become really the, the buzzword with, uh, with fitness conditioning in the last 10 years, in part because I like to think the books I wrote with Mark Verstegen, who really has pioneered core training. But when you look at stand-up paddleboarding, you're challenging your hips, your midsection, your arms, just the rotation of the paddle. There's a lot of uh, pushing. It's, it's, it's a, I shouldn't say pushing, but you're pulling. You're generating uh, force and rotational movement with your hips your midsection, your shoulder, that's what's a great workout in and of itself. Not only that, you're challenging your balance, which is so much of what uh, conditioning and training is about these days, by working on that unstable surface, and then it becomes a cardio workout. You can move as fast or as slow as you want, you can go out and take a leisurely paddle and still get all those benefits of a core training, but if you really want to start hammering and really paddling harder, then it becomes as effective as any sort of uh, cardio workout along the lines of... Um, uh, a rowing machine, along the lines of uh, biking, swimming, anything. What uh, what kind of equipment does the beginner need, and you know what kind of investment are we talking about to get into the sport? The uh, uh, stand-up paddle boards uh, on the surface, people look at them and say, "Wow, they're pretty expensive," and, and they are. Uh, your your boards tend to start at about eight hundred to fifteen hundred, uh, which is significant. But I have a lot of cyclists and triathlon uh, triathlete friends who say, "Boy, that's a lot of money." And then I look, well, it's a lot cheaper than that uh, four thousand to eight thousand dollar rig you're riding up and down the road that needs constant maintenance, repairs, and parts. Uh, paddle boards, uh, you know, you don't need much maintenance at all. You want to keep them indoors because the sun uh, can can be harmful to them, can melt some of the epoxy surfaces. But other than that, uh, they are low maintenance. You wipe them down. You, you keep from running into rocks and, and doing those sorts of things that can cause damage. But yes, and then a, a good paddle. Paddles can start for as little as $75. Uh, this is a higher end paddle I have here, The uh, one of the Quick Blade Elite Racer models. It can be over $300 up to upwards to $400. But really, when you think about a, an $800 board and as little as a $100 uh, paddle, it's, it's really not that big an investment, relatively speaking. Oh. I imagine that the sport started with people using regular surfboards and other kinds of paddles, and it, so now it's become so big that there's whole industries supporting it. Yeah, the stand-up paddleboard industry has just become an industry in and of itself. Uh, I went to Surf Expo, which is a big convention in Orlando back in September, and it was remarkable how much of that convention, the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, had become dedicated to stand-up paddleboarding. I mean, there's several dozen uh, uh, 
manufacturers of boards, uh, including uh, Yolo Board, which is uh, the one I ride, and that's uh, that's out of Santa Rosa Beach in Florida. But uh, as you can imagine, there are dozens of others popping up, uh, mostly in Southern California, where, where that kind of culture lives. But yeah, it's a huge industry, kind of one in the same, sort of a sister to surfing, but, but definitely its own industry in its own right. What's the last sort of, it's not quite an extreme sport, but what's the last kind of sport like this that popped up on the radar? People actually compare it a lot to outrigger canoeing. I, uh, that counts as a, um, an extreme sport, but when you think the, uh, the actual movement of the paddle is similar to what the Tahitians have used in outrigger canoe paddling for many years, because as we'll see, you know, you'll see on the board the video, but you're actually, you're not finishing your stroke and pulling all the way back here as you're taught in swimming to get that follow through. Most of your strength and your power comes from that, from the top of your board, and you take the paddle out at your feet. Because beyond that, you reach the point of diminishing returns. So you want to get that good reach and pull to your feet and then back out again. So you're really uh, moving from the hips, the shoulders, the midsection, and really driving. So it's a bit of an optical illusion for people, again, who come from that swim culture, used to finishing and, uh, and following through. But if you're familiar with outrigger canoe paddling at all, it's very similar. Um, Pete, what are some good safety tips? Yeah, a number of good safety tips you want to be aware of when you get out there. Above all else, you need to know how to swim. I mean, that seems uh, pretty obvious, but if you're going to be taking this out and you don't want to have a false sense of security, this is not a life-saving device by any means. Now, you can get a leash that can attach to your ankle to the back of your board, much like you would for surfing. That's going to help to some degree. If you fall off your board, you can swim back to the board. Uh, people do wear personal flotation devices. That's certainly recommended for beginners, for people who do not know how to swim. Absolutely. You'll see people sometimes put the PFDs on the front of their boat. Well, you know what? Or the front of your board, rather. You know what? That's not going to help when you fall off and you drift away. <laughs> your board's going to drift away, and so too will your personal flotation device. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, one thing we show in Paddle Fit, the book, is that when you fall off the board, you want to propel yourself away. You want to sort of uh, fall, fall gracefully, falling with style, as Buzz Lightyear would say. You don't want to hit yourself on the board, because that can be very dangerous for, for obvious reasons. So, yes, safety is uh, of a primary concern when you're paddleboarding. All right, so tell us about your general workout in a week, what, what day, how many days you work out, what you do, and where you fit paddleboarding into that. What I love about stand-up paddleboarding in terms of a workout, and again, I, I came into this after four years of a triathlon background, is that what it works and what we've done with paddle fit, not only do you get out and go paddling on the board, which is a workout in and of itself, but Brody Welty and I have developed a program, or really Brody developed it, I helped him write it and convey it into book form, book form. but what it is, it's a workout that you can do on the board. Uh, you'll see a number of plank exercises, shoulder rotations, an entire workout you can do on the board. And we also have a beach workout. Uh, we're at a great beach here in St. Pete where we take things like uh, a park bench, we take uh, just the sand itself, no equipment necessary, and you can do a workout with that. And what I have found, that's almost become my primary workout. It's terrific. I you know, don't have to have the expensive gym membership. I don't have to have any equipment at all. And I found it's just incredible. Like I said, I've done everything in terms of indoor workouts, gym workouts, the, the triathlon background, endurance, strength training, you name it. Love them all. And probably the best thing about any workout is the one you haven't tried is the best one because you're challenging your body in a new way. But what I love again about stand-up paddleboarding is how it just is the ultimate core conditioning and as well you bring that cardio element to it then you're out on the water and it's a, it's a lot of fun. You don't think of it as working out the way you do when you go to the gym. All right. Pete, very important question. Very, very important question. Now you and I are old married guys, kids, the whole thing. But uh, you must know from being around, chicks dig stand-up paddleboarders? I know chicks dig stand-up paddle boarding. I, I know that much. And they, women uh, tend to be more graceful, more balanced, uh, more adventurous. And for any number of reasons, I think they not only uh, get into stand-up paddle boarding more, but they enjoy it more. Uh, you know, you see the pictures on the internet of uh, women who are doing headstands on the paddle boards, doing all sorts of crazy uh, balance and flexibility things because they tend to have all, all those things in abundance uh, relative to guys. And I think they just enjoy the, the beach culture yeah, more than guys sometimes. And so, yeah, it's definitely a sport. Uh, I don't know what the numbers are, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's about 60, 40 female. They really enjoy, especially some of these classes where they get out on the boards. Uh, my colleague Brody Welty has taught these for a long time now, where he gets, you know, eight or ten predominantly women out on the boards, and they do a, a number of exercises that, that look a lot like Pilates and yoga, and they are. They borrow from all of those. Really just a tremendous workout.
Uh, let me ask you a question about the gracefulness on the board. It would seem like the toughest thing to learn is that move from kneeling to standing. Now, while we're talking, people are seeing some examples of things they can do on the board, but what advice would you actually have for making that? Because I imagine once you make that move comfortably, you can probably do about anything on the board. Absolutely, yeah. Getting up on the board is, is what people find is, is the most harrowing experience at all. And it's a lot easier than it looks. That's what everyone says. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought. Really, a couple things to remember. Just paddle on your knees for first and just get up on one leg first and then the second. And also think of it this way. Think about riding a bike. What's the, when are you going to fall down when the bike stops moving? So keep, build up that momentum by paddling on your knees. And when you have some momentum, that's the time to stand up. Don't think of it as, oh, I'm going to put up the board in the water and step onto it. That's not going to work. So build some momentum, paddling on your knees, and then just make that transition. So it's a two-step. It's get moving and then start moving up for the same reason. Um, I think it's a great, a great analogy to the bike. So get your board moving, and then you can feel more confident because there's that momentum in one direction. Absolutely. It'll balance your... Uh, Balance, That's going to keep you moving and then of course start paddling and just build some momentum even further. Alright, so what are three great exercises for the beginner that they can do on a paddleboard? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it very simple. Uh, we'll, we'll even show them on the board. You can do some push-ups and you can do them in three positions. You know, with your hands like this, straight forward, 45 degree angle out, out, out 45 degree angle in. So that you can do some push-ups, you can do some planks where you're holding your body essentially on your forearms and your toes and planking upward for up to a minute, and uh, that's a good one to do. We also do a whole series of shoulder rotations with our knees slightly bent where we can move our shoulders like this. And again, we've added the unstable surface because shoulders are so important to stand up paddle boarding and also shoulder strength over the course of life in general because let's face it, we're brutal on our shoulders all day. We're hunched over computers, airline seats behind our wheel. What's happening? We're all losing height gradually. We wonder why we used to be one inch shorter. Well, if we can do all these ro shoulder rotations and open ourselves up, not only are we gonna maximize the, the height God gave us, we're also gonna, again, prevent ourselves from developing those long-term injuries and deterioration. As someone is, is helping us out behind behind you, Pete. Uh, you can't see it, but there uh, there's a little little motorboat pulling a uh, a surfer along behind him. It's very cool, and they're coming up right behind you. If you want to turn around, you can look. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, just adding to why it's so exciting to be down here on the water. All right, so let's before we wrap up, let's talk a little bit about what makes the book uh, paddle fit unusual. First of all, it's a it's a book with a V, V-O-O-K. Not a book, it's a book. Um, how does that work? I think what's interesting about the book is for the last maybe 15 years of the introduction of CD-ROM, everyone has tried to say, how can we best blend video, photos, and text? And even here in 2011, I'm not sure we've really gotten it, but the book people seem to be coming really close. And if you think about, if you're familiar with the iPad, I think once the iPad came along after book, book uh, actually was ahead of the curve, people said, wow, this is what it's all about. If I can be reading along and I can click on the video, I know as somebody who's co-authored fitness books, no matter how great our, our pictures are, you see the beginning, the middle, and the end of the exercise photo, people always say, you know what, I wish we had some video. And my colleague Mark Verstegen on his core performance website has thousands of videos for people to look at. But what if we could have this all in one device, one compact presentation? And that's what the book does. So, you know, from a writing standpoint, I provided the writing and then we shot all these videos with the help of the folks at Encounter Creative. We went down to the keys and we blended this all together so you not only can read about the exercises and how to stand up paddleboard, you not only can see photos, but then you can click on actual video. And you know you can take your iPad down to the beach with you if you have the waterproof case. I guess you could take it out on the board uh, if you were so inclined. Don't know if I'd recommend that, but really uh, just provides a, a really unique presentation. All right, now I'm kind of a technology idiot. Now I'm not, but I'm speaking on behalf of many of my listeners and viewers. Uh, I don't understand how do I how do I get to a book? How do I how do I see it? How do I do I need to download it? Do I do I need a special device? You do. It, uh, book is, is best viewed on an iPad or an iPhone. You can buy it uh, on iTunes uh, through iBooks, and it's uh, downloadable in that regard. It is, uh, at this moment, available for Kindle uh, on the Kindle Fire, which does have a, a video capability. If you have a, a 
uh, earlier generation Kindle, you'll only be able to get the uh, the text and the photos, which in and of itself is, is a tremendous presentation, and the, the price point at that uh, reflects that. It's lower than that uh, with the video. So you can see it on a Kindle and, and also a Nook as well. So really it is made for these uh, these devices. Unfortunately, not a regular desktop laptop application, but yeah, again, the, the way the, uh, the world is going, it seems to be the right place, the right space to have it. Folks, you can download Brody Welty and Pete Williams' new book. Again, that's an ebook with video, Paddlefit, in the iTunes iBook store or at book, V O O K, dot com. Uh, Pete, do you guys have a website, Twitter, Facebook, any of that kind of stuff? You can learn more about it at standupfitness.com and also uh, available at amazon.com, of course, as well. Very cool. Uh, Pete Williams, good friend, regular guest on Mr. Media. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thanks, Bob. Really appreciate it. Good to see you. folks, you can hear Mr. Media while on the go now with Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher is a free news and talk mobile app available for your smartphone, whether you use an iPhone, iPod Touch, Android, Blackberry Curve, or Palm Pre. And when you download Stitcher to hear Mr. Media today, you have a chance to win some real money. Downloading is quick and easy. Just find Stitcher in your smartphone's app store. Download it. It's free. Take seconds. Then, during registration, Hit the promo code box and enter Mr. Media, that's MR Media, to get automatically entered to win $100. The latest episode of Mr. Media will be waiting for you in Stitcher's Favorites right on your phone. You'll get access to lots of other amazing shows too, always available to you on demand, no syncing. Some of my favorites include WTF with Mark Marin, Plus One Per Diem with Kevin Smith, and The Nerdist with Chris Hardwick. It's all free and all instant to you on Stitcher Smart Radio. And don't forget to win the money. Enter promo code MRMedia MR Media, when you register. And thanks for listening. <laughs>